Hey guys, it's Mike here from Taylor RC and uh, we've got an exciting reveal of our new engine today. Uh, but I would like to start please with a big thank you to all of our customers and supporters um, during this year. We've had a, an interesting year with our rebranding. You know, we didn't really have a sort of a choice. We put in a position where we had to rebrand and it was quite nerve wracking uh, for myself and uh, you guys just got behind me and gave me a huge amount of support and, and, and boosted the confidence. So I want to say thank you for that. It, it's made a huge difference. And uh, I've just got, got loads of energy now with the new brand to, to, to move forward with loads of new products. And uh, I mean, this is a great example of, uh, of what we can achieve um, with the right approach. So um, yeah, a bit of a background then. So we wanted to get involved in the small engine gas market. Um, obviously, there's, uh, as you know, CY, all those brands, and there's lots of fantastic tuners out there uh, doing like, performance mods of those uh, original stock engines. And I've just got to say a shout out to them all. Obviously, we've experienced all of their engines as part of our background testing, um, and, and there's some really good porters in our industry, and we should all be very grateful for that. So, um, you know, O'Neill's, uh, Bart Alone, Oddified, Scott Finley. Um, you know, all the other guys, just great work, you know, so impressive. Um, so yeah, we wanted to get involved and join the party. Um, obviously anybody that knows um, myself and the way I'd like to work, I'm all about doing things unique, you know, trying to go a little bit next level compared to what may or may not be available at the moment. Um, in my uh, motorsport career, uh, previous to, to joining the RC industry, I uh, did a bit of racing, really enjoyed that, and quad supermoto was one of my favorite sports. We were one of the only people running a two-stroke engine when all the competition had changed to uh, four-stroke um, high-performance single cylinders, you know, the KTMs and that, and, and the phenomenal engines, but we persevered with what we're doing, and we developed our own complete transmission and engine setup so that we could beat them, and uh, you know, eventually we got banned for it, but that was <laughs> that's all part of the fun. Uh, anyway, so, <clears throat> you, you may have seen with our big bore engines, if you're familiar with the brand, uh, we do make our own cylinders. We design and uh, we have manufactured our own cylinders at a foundry and it gives us the opportunity to, 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 to sort of you know, be different to what is currently available. Like say, for example, most big bores are just built with uh, scooter cylinders bolted onto billet cases. Um, we try and sort of uh, you know, give ourselves the flexibility of, of designing our own port maps and I've learned a lot from that. I wanted to bring that experience to the small um, small block, as I like to call it, uh, engine market. Um, Size-wise, you probably noticed already, we're going to do a 35cc and it's just a nice size, really good transition from the, the 29, 32 to 35 with ourselves and then like 40 is sort of the common starting size for uh, what we call big bore engines, you know, big block engines within RC. Um, and it hasn't been done before, which is so nice to do something new and innovative. So I'd like to show you a little bit of history. I don't normally do this. Um, you know, most sort of ugly prototypes are kept behind the scenes at uh, most businesses. But I wanted to just show you, we, we, did a, we did do a prototype. This is 2019, this one. So the project's been going around the back of my head for quite a while. We used some OBR uh, turtle cases, uh, great cases, and just as a bit of a, a basis for ourselves and, and welded them up, um, you know, TIG welded them so that we could get some extra width for bigger ports. This is a standard block um, casting from our, our foundry guys, just so that then we could internally create our own ports, literally just by uh, grinding them out to where we wanted to go. And... It taught me a lot, but it never got to where I wanted to be. Um, and and uh, you know, it proved the concept of having a separate billet head is a really nice idea, uh, more like a modern engine. And we proved that we definitely wanted to go ahead with a custom cylinder, but this thing is too heavy, for example. It's, the cylinder is too bulky with the fact that the transfers are so wide, a bit more like a modern cylinder. It meant fitment issues and all sorts of problems. So it was a great starting ground pound, but we sort of put that to one side and went back to the drawing board a little bit and decided that if we're going to bring a new engine in, it had to be more consistent with CY and Zeno, what is currently available on the market. So all of these different vehicles are obviously made for uh, for the for the CY and Genoa engines to fit straight into. And we wanted to give something that would just drop into all those situations with no hassle, none of the, the, the headaches that we have with our big bore engines in, in making things fit and cutting cages and modifying special intakes and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, so that's where we kind of got to. Create our own cylinder was, was the main part of the goal and um, obviously develop a custom engine to try and be different and unique to everyone else. And I am pleased to be able to show you, this is gonna be the, uh, the, the, the packaging, obviously it's gonna be a printed box, uh, but we're gonna have proper um, 
sort of, uh, I call it like iPhone style. You know, I love my packaging uh, and John at Detroit loves his packaging even more than me. So I didn't have a choice on this one. Proper CNC routed uh, foam inserts. And then you're gonna open your box and there is your engine um, fully protected inside your box, which I think is gonna be just beautiful. Nice for keeping it in storage later if you'd wanna put it back on the shelf. Um, here she is. And I am, I tell you, I'm very proud of this. It's a real piece of work. Um, for, for small subtle reasons that make a huge huge difference first thing you're going to notice is it is a piston port i think there'll be some guys that are surprised at that but when you you understand my reasoning you will you'll be on board with the, the with the design choice so obviously the, the piston port is, is fantastic in the sense that it gives us a, a complete universal fitment everything this engine will fit anywhere that a cy or zenoa stock you know 23 to, to 32 cc and all the bigger clone stuff fits it'll just drop straight in no hassle that comes with uh, the, the position of revalves on terms of fitment. So it doesn't matter if you've got a red cat or an FG or whatever it may be, you can, if you would like to purchase this engine and drop it straight in. It does come with this um, beautiful billets clutch housing. Uh, hopefully you can see that there. This again is to do with fitment in the sense that we didn't want anybody to have the, 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 the worry of which housing do they buy off the market because the bolt pattern is the same. You can go and buy yourself a Vertigo universal housing and put that on there if you want to use the the, the mesh brace for the, the 1.0 lossy and stuff. Um, so that's the option is still there, but it does come with a free clutch housing so that you don't have to have that worry and it makes fitment a dream. It comes with a shim as well so that it fits every offset and it'll just drop straight into your platform. Just use any normal 54 mil clutch and off you go. Um, the main point uh, with any with any two-stroke engine is the cylinder. That's where the real power is made. And we felt that the Zenoa cylinder was holding back the small block uh, gas engine market, in our opinion. Obviously it was designed for, for X amount of horsepower. These phenomenal tuners out there that I've mentioned before are doing a great job of squeezing every little bit of power available from that cylinder. But at the end of the day, you still can't change the base product that you start from. You're still modifying something that was only intended to be what it, you know, what it was originally designed for. Obviously with us making an, uh, our own cylinder, we have given, we've given a complete free reign on internal design. And the, the internals of our cylinder are, we've got bigger transfer ports, we've got a bigger intake port. Um, We've got a much, much nicer exhaust port, which is the key feature of this cylinder. We have a very wide bridge. I'm not sure if you can see the bridge there, a bridged exhaust port, which anybody that knows a little bit about two strokes, that is the more modern way of doing things. You have a larger, wider port with some form of bridge or maybe even a triport with bridges, which allows the piston ring to still be fully supported for reliability, but the, the port to be wider so that you can properly scavenge the cylinder on the exhaust stroke of the engine. So after the gas has been burnt on your power stroke, you obviously got an engine that's full of burnt gases that you want out. And the wider the port tends to get round to these edges of the cylinder, which can't otherwise be scavenged properly. So you get a more efficient, I mean, it's a pump effectively. Every engine's a pump and you're all looking to try and improve the efficiency of your pump. So getting those burnt gases out is a big difference in the way that we can make more power than any tuned Zenoa cylinder uh, with our, um, our sort of, with this particular engine. And, the obvious the base design goal of any any manufacturer when they're creating a product is to be better than anything else that's on the market and that was always our goal was to offer a 35 cc piston port that was obviously oem style and ultra reliable which this is you know there's no porting done in terms of the positions of the port they're all cast to my port map from a you know from a foundry so instead of having to grind them to where they should be that they're, they're they're placed there correctly and the plating goes round the edge of the port so you don't have any port edges lifting with uh, you know with with where you ported them, um, but was to be able to offer you this style of engine with as much power or more power than the best engine current on the market. It was always the design goal. And it did take us a long time to get there, lots of iterations of this cylinder and the other, you know, the bottom end to match it. Uh, but we got there and, you know, it's something now that I'm very proud of. Hopefully you'll see in the short teaser video and other videos that are gonna follow over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, just just how much uh, sort of performance we've been able to to sort of develop from this uh, from this platform, which is you know OEM style in in, in a sense. We've tried to create a, an engine that is a properly suited package rather than being something that's modified. So that's good. We've got a removable billet head, eight bolt pattern to give you a, a fantastic sort of uh, consistency of sealing and stability at high temperatures. This head, um, albeit beautiful, is also very very functional. We do have a proper a cooling fan in there and the cylinder is obviously cooled just like a Sonoa engine, but at the same time, and so, so the head is obviously cooled as well, that this little custom air guide brings air over the top of the, uh, the cylinder head as well. But 
because of the extra height of the head, um, we get obviously a, a lot more cooling from pure convection and natural air cooling uh, through the through the panels in your in your car as well. So the actual cooling capacity in terms of surface area of fins and the way that it works is much more efficient than as an OR engine as well. So that gives us an extra ability to make more power and get the power out of the engine, you know, to keep the temperatures down and keep the reliability up. You'll see and the way that we've designed this cylinder, we've absolutely maximized the surface area of fins within trying to stay within the original uh, dimensions that sort of Sonoa and CY set out in their original design. So that again, we didn't have any fitment issues. That was very important. Um, as well as the clutch housing coming free with the engine, this beautiful billet uh, intake manifold comes with. Um, that does solve um, uh, heat transfer to the carb as well. It has some very modern, um, 1.5 millimeter thick gaskets either side of the, the manifold. So you've got one that comes, this is how the engine will be supplied. You'll also have a carb gasket supplied with the engine um, that um, it is made from the same material. So you've got three millimeters of, of protection, a very thermally resistant uh, material, which have, have proven in all of our tests, both dyno and out in the heat of Australia, that that can um, you know with, withstand the, the temperatures of the cylinder through to the carburetor. So heat soak is not a problem, even though we have our billet manifold and no Teflon. I'm not a big fan of Teflon. I've tried it on the big bore engines and you get creep and it's just a nightmare. So this gives you a consistent seal. The gaskets are actually reusable for quite a few periods, you know, quite a quite a few times. And, um, you know, it, it's just a nice solution to the problem. Uh, the cooling inlet uh, vents in the case are nice and small, lots of very, very small holes. So uh, we've gone even further than, than other manufacturers have done in the past in terms of the, the venting, the, the sort of filtration of the crankcase of the air going in. Plenty of surface area there to, to go in. Obviously, it's still got the, the vents on the pull start. Uh, I'm not showing you too much of this side of the engine at the minute because it obviously will be dressed up on the production engine. This is, is a final pre-production prototype, the same that's out there in four or five cars being tested at the moment and, and beaten to death. Um, in, in, to give us the, the videos that we'll be releasing shortly as well as the, uh, the confidence that we've done it all correctly. Um, yeah, we've obviously got a, we've got a billet crankshaft. Uh, we're actually, we've gone to ADA and got their help on the crankshaft. They've proven over a long period of time with their, um, with their own crankshaft that they can do a good job and we didn't try and vent the re wheel. We went, we went to them and they've, they've supplied us with uh, you know, a big bulk batch of long rod uh, crankshafts at 31 mil stroke to give us our 35 cc and um, we're really pleased with them. We, we were very, very impressed on the initial tests. We tried our best to, to break the rod, uh, you know, just leaving it on the dyno flat out. And, and it's really, really strong setup. Piston is obviously custom with the wider exhaust port. The Sonoa piston is, is miles too narrow. You'd have all sorts of blow by issues. It's a custom piston um, with our custom cylinder and matched beautifully with a nice billet case that's all flowed in properly. The intake manifold is beautifully flowed into the cylinder. It's absolute perfect port match. Uh, not like some of the compromises we see elsewhere. Proper cooling fan, like we talked about. Uh, the, the ignition is is just all, all Zenoa compatible. I should take the time to say thank you to Sean at CY Industries for helping us out with the knickknacks, you know, the, the ignition style, style, style of things and the, the fan cover and all that sort of stuff where it gives the chance to use uh, genuine off-the-shelf um, proven parts that have enabled us to have an engine that just drops straight into the same fitment as, um, you know, a standard CY. Um, well, without having to make all our own pieces because we, there's no way we could afford to, to make all the molds and everything for this as well as doing the cylinders. So it was nice to have the, the help and, and kind of support of another manufacturer. So that was good. Um, I think I've covered most of the technical details of the engine. Um, yeah, oh, the um, exhausts. This has been designed to be completely compatible, as you can tell by the shape of the exhaust port, with all exhausts on the market for Zenoas. Of course, it'll make more power with uh, larger pipes like the the, you know, the Olimat 34cc plus. We make some of our own, um, like a Baja side pipe that we make 34cc plus. It, they definitely make more power on that. The the larger Stinger now is from the different chambers um, from the different companies that have specialized in a, in a larger pipe uh, really do help. But it will, if you want to stick it in your MCD with a Barracuda, it will work. It might not make the perfect level of power, but it's still going to be more powerful than anything else that you can get hands on. So why not, you know? Um, yeah, carburetor wise, it is not going to be supplied with a carburetor, although there will be options to add one to your cart for cost price. So really cost effective. The reason being is, is lots of you already have engines that you're going to be swapping out and there's lots of fantastic carbs on the market, you know, your retails and stuff. So you'd be able to just bolt on whatever you already have, or you can add them to your cart when you're shopping. 
um, to, to make a, you know, a cost price addition. So that should be a, um, a, a great way of making it uh, sort of universal, um, but also adding you the options. We are planning, albeit some disaster aside, for this to be a on the shelf option. So with us making an OEM style engine rather than porting, say buying in Zenoas and porting them, uh, it obviously gives us all the, all the technical advantages that I've explained, but the other advantage is that we can make them in a reasonable quantity, uh, all totally reliant on our own factors. We're not reliant on whether Zeno runs out of stock or anything. So we should, in theory, all being well, keep these in stock at all time, both ourselves here at Taylor and uh, Detroit Performance, for example, for our dealers, so that you can have one shipped uh, next day. Now, there will be times that we run out, of course, but that is the, the goal of the project. So, yeah, hopefully you're pleased with all of that. I think I've covered all the, the main aspects there other than the important factors, price and availability. Uh, hopefully you guys are pleased to note this will be £620 or 850 bucks, um, all in as you see it, you know, with the clutch housing and uh, billet manifold all supplied. Um, the availability we're expecting to be ready the end of January. Some factors depending on the moulders and um, some of the other custom pieces, but... Um, the pistons are done and the cylinders are being molded at the minute. So we, we would like to think that they will be done, machined, painted and to us ready for, for, for us to do a bit of a production batch before the end of, the, of next month. You know, give or take a week or two. Um, yeah, I think we've covered most things there. Uh, any questions, please let me know in comments, etc. But um, we'll be updating you with more videos of this soon. And uh, yeah, it, it should, it's, it's an exciting project and I hope you guys are on board with it. So thank you very much for watching.